What up? It's JoJo on the radio. This is the iHeartRadio countdown, and I haven't seen this guy in almost exactly a year, give or take, right before the world uh, ended. Uh, Conan Gray, what's up, man? How how you been? I've been good. I'm alive. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Now I'm looking. You know, the the one good thing about Zoom is I can look into people's houses and kind of see what's going on. All I see behind you, Conan Gray, is a white wall. So where where yeah. are, are you in jail? Where are you at? actually exist in a different plane of existence. I'm floating in space in just white nothingness because I decided Earth was too much. It's too much going on. So I moved to a different planet. Well, that yeah. you know what? Uh, that may, may, if you need some company, let us know. Maybe we can all yeah. move in with you. There's plenty of room. <laughs> you know this, but just to catch everybody up, uh, you came in to see me about a year ago and yep. we did this interview, you know, for the iHeartRadio countdown, but it never aired because it was right before the world ended, you know, or, or got put on pause, the, all that stuff. And uh, it, how my question is, how have you been? How, how has your 2020 experience been? How, how's this whole thing? How, how have you dealt with it? It's been interesting. I mean, 2020 was an interesting year, to say the very least, yeah. for everyone. <laughs> um, I spent all of it in my house. Like I really didn't do anything. I didn't see friends. I just like stuck out in my house. Uh, I've been calling a lot of friends. I've been like obsessing over new random hobbies. I learned how to make very fancy coffee. I got a latte maker. Ooh. I've just been like reading <laughs> books. I've really, I feel like I've regressed to like my 14 year old self. Uh, so that's been, it's, it's been good on my end. I'm safe. And I think that's the most important thing above everything. Hey, uh, the coffee, this coffee specialty, what, what, mm -hmm. it, what have you, give me the most creative thing you've created coffee wise. Well, I'm really, really bad at it, but I try very hard to make like latte hearts, you know, the, you know, cute little oh, things yeah. that they give you, like when you're like at, at, with some like sexy barista or something, um, <laughs> I can't do it very well. So it always turns out being something weird, like it'll look like a frog or like a weird, like demented something that like sh I shouldn't say, you know? Uh, so so I've, I've had fun like posting all my messed up latte art on my Instagram story. Uh, so it's been pretty fun. Yeah, so very bad. Being, being a barista is not in your future. Luckily you do music. So that's, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Okay, okay, right. cool. I assume you're working on an album. Knowing you, you've been writing, among other things, aside from making coffee all this time in your house. Uh, you're working on an album, an EP, a body of music. What what can you uh, unveil in in uh, in that area? Uh, I've been writing all the time. I write a song basically every single day. I wish I could turn my brain off, but I can't. It's just noisy. Um, and I think people can definitely expect a bunch of music, but I'm not, I'm not quite sure yet. I'm still kind of figuring myself out. It's been very introspective in the quarantine. So, um, yeah, people can expect new music, but, uh, nothing, nothing certain yet. Don't want to get anyone's hopes up. <laughs> Are you working with, uh, with Tedder at all on the album? I know you work with him on the single. I, I love him. I love him. And hopefully once quarantine is over and stuff. I can kind of get back in and start working with him and all the people that I, I love so much. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned you write a song a day. I, the last time I talked with you, if I recall correctly, um, I had a question. Uh, it, uh, you, I think you told me you wrote two to three songs per day since you were 12. Yeah. So have you dropped off? Has, has this slowed you down? I, I would assume it would have picked up. <laughs> you know what? Slacking Jojo? only one song a day. <laughs> Jojo, life is extremely boring right now. I don't have much to say anymore. <laughs> no one, there's not much to say. So one song a day is gonna have to be enough for you, okay? Fine, Fine Conan. Conan, uh, your fans love you, and I doubt they've seen you in a while because, as we've you know covered, you've been in the house for quite a while. Um, but I love psycho fan stories. Mm. Do you have a good you know moment where a fan just went? little too, not that they weren't beautiful, lovely, wonderful people, but they're a little too extra. Um, I mean, honestly, every time I meet a fan, it's like always a very special experience. I, I've met quite a few fans in quarantine who've like recognized me even with my mask on. And it's like, it's, um, it's really interesting. I'm like, how do you, how can you even tell? Like, do I walk weird? Am I like, do I smell or something? Like, why does it, <laughs> how can people tell? Um, but but I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, definitely I've had a few experiences where people who definitely weren't fans just like knew who I was and like would like try to act like they didn't. And then they would like come up and like, hey, like, 
you that singer dude? And I'm like, uh, no, maybe I'm not, you know, like, please <laughs> stop this, please. I just want to, I just want to drink my coffee in peace. This is scary. Um, but no, everyone's so wonderful. And I'm always grateful every time someone comes up and says hi. What do you think the giveaway is? I mean, with the mask on, that's pretty, you know, it's like sure. a, yeah, how, how do they tell? I'm not sure. My friends say that I, that I, <laughs> that I, my hair is really big and then it just kind of gives me away. Um, but I'm fine. I mean, I'm not trying to hide. I love meeting fans. It's always so nice. And actually everyone that I've met in quarantine has been so kind and really like been like, yeah, like let's like everyone's respected the six feet apart. And it's been, it's been actually really, really nice. You know, social interaction is very low at the moment. So anytime I meet anyone, I'm very happy. <laughs> I'm with you. I, I talk to anybody. Yeah, not, yeah. I'm not saying I don't I like talking to you right now. I, I'm, I, this is great, <laughs> even though we're on Zoom. And this didn't air for obvious reasons. We, we were talking about your Coachella performance. Like you were, right. you were, I was excited. You know, you were excited. We were all pumped up. And then, you know, the world comes crashing down. Uh, mm -hmm. So fast forward a year, you must be going absolutely insane to jump on a live stage, a tour, anything. I mean, give me your thoughts on how anxious you are to get back on the road. I mean, I, I can't wait to be able to play music again. I mean, that's that's one of the most special parts about doing anything, about writing songs and being able to experience it with other people. But um, I think above all, I just can't wait to like meet fans and not have to like, you know, awkwardly wave from far away. And I, and I wanna see my friends again. I wanna like breathe all over them and not be afraid of killing them. Um, I, ju I just, you know, like I think um, live music is so wonderful, but um, mostly I just want everyone to be safe. You know, that's my main, main worry and goal. So safe to say it's too early to have tour talks or live show talks at this point. I think, I mean, I think it's going to take a lot longer than, than people are expecting. And um, I think we'll always want to err on the side of safety, you know? So give me some details on the Overdrive video. Yeah, well, so I do this thing where I'm like this, ult I'm an ultra romantic. I romanticize every single thing that happens to me at any given moment. So I'll like be outside, like, I don't know, like walking around on the street and I'll see someone and I'm like, that person's the most beautiful person I've ever seen in my entire life and I'm going to marry them. And so within like one second, I'm fantasizing about like our alternate life, our wedding, what our kids will look like and like where we'll live and things like that. And like how we're gonna be like rebellious and fun and stuff like that. And so the video is kind of this, uh, it's this uh, daydream basically about um, meeting someone and having an entire life with them, even though they're just a stranger. I'll do that at times, like certain songs will hit me. And it seems like when you're driving around, it feels like you're almost in a movie, you know? Yes, totally. It's kind of a wild, surreal thing. And some songs hit you like that more so than others. Have you ever approached someone like you see this person daydream in your head? Have you ever got up, gone up to him and say, hey, by the way, I just, you know, we, we got married and we lived and had kids and maybe that would be a weird conversation. <laughs> no. but... <laughs> Jojo, I wish I did, but I'm terrified of every person that I've ever met. Everyone is, I'm, I'm such a shy person. I'm very, very <laughs> reserved and I'm terrified of rejection. So if anyone were to be like, no, I don't like you. I would be mortified for the rest of my life. So I keep my mouth shut and I walk away. God, uh, you know what? I, I feel your pain, Conan. Uh, Conan, let's, uh, you know, we talked about the video Overdrive. Let's, let's play this track. What do people, you know, what, yeah, what do people need to know about Overdrive? Yeah, so I wrote this song with Tobias Jesse Jr., who's this incredible songwriter, and it's produced by Monsters and Strangers. And um, basically, this song is just supposed to be a form of escape. It's just something that, it's a song that we wrote and it's just like made me want to dance. It's been a really tough year, and I wanted to just spread a little bit of joy. I wanted to give people a little fantasy right now. You know, um, I think the only thing I want is to like feel happy and, and have something to kind of daydream a little bit too so that's what this song is it's about meeting a stranger and imagining an entire life with them and kind of throwing away your inhibitions in life and doing everything that you want to do in the moment so yeah it's a it's just a little escape something that can hopefully make people feel a little happy and spread a little bit of joy I think I read that um this uh like you would you would you know be walking around your house trying to think what do I need to change about this song what am I missing but yeah. you just got lost in the song and you, you didn't change it because it just, it just, it's kind of perfect and it, how it is. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of one of those songs when I was working on it, I'd be like, oh, well, I have to listen and like make sure that this, like this little tambourine is the right sound or something. And then like within 10 seconds, I'm like, just like dancing and like singing into like, you know, my hairbrushes. I mean, it was just very, 
it just always pulls me in and, and it just makes me feel good. And that's kind of, I think that's kind of all we could ask for right now is to feel good. Conan, uh, what is, and this is going to be a loaded question, what is the best performance? Not you, I'll get to you. We're not grading your performance. What is the best performance you have ever seen? Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a mega loaded question. Loading. I don't know why, but immediately my head went to Whitney Houston's performance of the Star Spangled Banner for the, like, for the Super Bowl. I don't know what year it was, but like, Something that was the about year 9 11. That was the 9 11 year. Yes, yes, that year. And that performance was just like, it was godly. It was incredible. And um, I, don't, I don't know. She, she's real. That's kind of what pops into my head immediately. She's, she is incredible. And um, uh, one of the best performances probably of all time. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen that one, Google that for sure. What do you consider your best performance and the complete flip of that, your worst? Give me, give me one where everything went right. And one where everything went straight to hell. Right. Uh, one of my favorite shows of my entire life was my first show in London. And it was my biggest show that I'd ever played. And, you know, I'd only been on one tour at that point. So I was kind of new. And I stepped outside onto stage and there were, you know, thousands of people. And that night we actually broke the record of the venue of how loud the screams were. Wow. Um, and it was they they counted the decibels and it was equal to the sound of a commercial jet plane taking off. <laughs> it, I just remember it being so loud and everyone was so excited and it was just one of the most surreal moments of my entire life. Um, and that crowd, I mean, in London, they they really give you their all. And I was just so happy to be with those people. At the end um, of the show, were your, were, were your ears ringing like a hee in your ears? Because yeah, it was so I could, I was bare. I was levitating off the floor. I mean, like I was barely even there at the end of the show. It was incredible. Um, and my worst show, I know immediately what my worst show was. It was my first show ever in my hometown in Austin, Texas. I grew up in a small town of an hour away from Austin, but you know, like it was a small show. It was at Stubbs and it was Halloween. So I stepped out and I went on stage and I was expecting to see a crowd. And instead it was just like people like covered in blood and like wings and like stuff like that. And it freaked me out for a minute. And it was already whack right from the start. Then I was dancing around and I kept like knocking into stuff. And there was always like ringing everywhere. And I did a horrible performance. I was nervous because like all my childhood friends were there. And then at the very end of the show, I stepped off stage. And as I was getting back on, I slammed my head into a speaker and it went doom. And it like echoed through the venue and it was so embarrassing. And the whole crowd went, ooh. And I was like, oh God. And I just kept singing. It was so, so embarrassing. And it was my worst show of my entire life in my hometown in front of my childhood friends. It was really embarrassing. Of all places. Why, why is he going to yeah. be there? Why, uh, I don't uh, know. This is the question I've been dying to ask you. You may not know this about me. I am obsessed with, with the paranormal ghosts, UFOs, all that stuff. I've got a podcast right. called Paranormalish. I'm off, I'm off the deep end, clearly. Right. You grew up, or so I'm told, in a, in a real haunted house. I, I did, yes. Tell me something. Give me, give me something that stands out. All right. This is probably the worst story that I have. And I, when I tell it, it doesn't seem real. because of. But the only reason that I know it's real is because it happened to my sister and I at the same time. So the day we were moving out of the house, moving all the way to Texas from California... Um, my sister had this doll growing up that used to sing this song every time you pressed its foot and say, hello, 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 hello. And at the end of the song, it would say goodbye. Um, so, you know, we were moving out. Everything was out of the room. We stepped into her room and we heard something coming from the closet. And we were like, what is, what's that sound? And it was like, do, 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 do. So, so we, oh, so we were like, what, what is it? We opened the closet and the doll is standing in the middle of the closet it's singing the song completely alone. It's singing the song and it's singing the song that's getting faster and faster and faster. It goes like, da -da -da -da. And it's like singing like super high pitched. It sounds like the doll is screaming at this point. And then all of a sudden at the very end, it goes through the entire song, it sings it super, super fast and then it goes, goodbye. <laughs> and I swear it, I swear it happened. I would not believe that it happened if it didn't happen to my sister and I. And it was like, my sister and I were like, what that, I thought we packed that away and we just left it there. We were like, we're not taking that with us to Texas. And that was the house's way of saying goodbye to us. 
Oh my, and things like this would happen from time to time, you know, the entire yes. time you live there? Regularly, there was just like constantly, like my cat would walk in one side of the house, come out the completely other side, faucets and all that classic stuff, you know, people walking through the halls. It was a haunted house. Like you saw spirits or whatever, just yeah, strolling people, through. People, I remember like people would be in the hallways and like they'd like whistle and like sing songs and stuff like that. What the heck? I need, I need to get you on the podcast so we can yeah. go through that bit by bit. Right. I have a lot of stories for you. Have you ever been starstruck? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't, I can't really think of a time that I was really starstruck. Um, I usually just mentally shut down if I'm meeting someone that I really like. Um, it's kind of a protection thing. So <laughs> also with attractive people, I, I don't get starstruck, but I get like attractive person struck. So like if I meet someone that I'm, that's like unbelievably beautiful, I'll just like not be able to look them in the eye. Um, but I don't want to name any names or else I'll definitely have some really awkward situation <laughs> come up in my life. <laughs> um, but no, I, I can't really think of any moment. I'm sure it'll happen sometime soon. I'm definitely, have you met, uh, have you met Taylor Swift yet? I have not met Taylor Swift. And the moment that that happens, I'm pretty sure I will melt through the ground. You have to, I mean, it's clearly, maybe she's heard about your, you know, you, you, you respect her, you love her. I know you want to work with her. Who doesn't, obviously. But, you know, that's, that's got to happen at some point, right? I mean, you put it out into the universe. It's bound to, you're in that circle now. It's bound to happen. I, I love her so much. And anytime she's like reached out or anything like that, it, it makes my entire year. So um, I'm, sure, <laughs> I'm sure it will be a very special moment to meet her. All right. Uh, consider this an invite, Taylor, to work with uh, Conan. If that, you know, just throwing that out there. Uh, what curious, what album in, for people that love music and are, are in the industry like we are, there's typically an album or a song that kind of changes your life. Uh, for me, the album was Thriller, Michael Jackson's mm. Thriller. What mm. album did it for you? Uh, I'm going to say Pure Heroin by Lord definitely changed me forever. I think Royals, when I heard that song, it was the first time that I ever heard a pop song that I related to. You know, I was growing up in the suburbs. I wasn't like popping bottles and stuff like that. So, <laughs> so it was the first song that I actually understood and it was a pop song. And um, it really changed my perspective of, of music and what could be pop music. And uh, I, I owe a lot to Miss Ella Yellick O'Connor for sure. That's another artist on this countdown. We'll throw it out there. Lord, think about working with Conan Gray. <laughs> there it is. It's in the universe. <laughs> what is your family and your friends and your inner circle's reaction to all this uh, success you're having? I know there's, you know, still, still got a ways to go and, you know, but uh, yeah, what, how are they feeling? They find it all hilarious. Uh, very often they tell me that I don't deserve it <laughs> <What>? <laughs> and that they can't, they can't understand why anyone likes me. <laughs> Um, and, that? and that's why oh I love God. them. You know, they keep me down to earth, but they, pull, they drag me down to earth again. Um, all my friends are like, why do people like you? You're just, you're just Conan. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, God. you're, I mean, that's valid. Um, no, but they're all very proud of me, but they're definitely, they are unfazed. They do not care in the slightest. <laughs> how, how, how are you dealing with, it? I read somewhere that, and I'm, I'm not even sure what this is, but uh, imposter syndrome, where you think mm. that you're like, how do I deserve this? How, it's, yeah. What, yeah. What's your reaction to all the uh, success so far? I mean, it's super, super surreal. I find it hard to believe that anyone cares. And so I'm just very grateful. It's, 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 I mean, it's unbelievable. And it's crazy too, because so much has happened just in quarantine. I haven't been able to see any of it, like with my eyes in front of me. So it's going to be really weird when I return back to the normal world. And um, it's, it's, yeah, I'm just very grateful and, and um, just mind blown. Uh, Conan's track, Overdrive, it's out. Get on this track or you're a bad person. I think that's safe to say, right? <laughs> yep. That's a, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, video, check the video for sure. New music coming soon. Did you, did you, uh, did you mention an, al an album date or do you even know a date at this point? That's probably that's way, <laughs> I, too early. Way, too, way too early. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> I, I even said that. Uh, what am I forgetting to ask you, Kona? Oh, I don't know. What are you forgetting to ask me? You never asked me why I'm so beautiful. <laughs> why, why are you so dang good looking, Conan? I don't know. It's just, I was just born this way. <laughs> God, de definitely I need to get you on the podcast. Paranormal. -ish. I, I want to go through this haunted house you lived in. St like yeah. every tiny detail. I want to hear everything, man. It's so I fascinating. I can give you everything.
All right, Conan, great. Thanks for hanging out, man. At the end of every countdown, fist bump to make it official. Tap that camp, sir. Bang! <laughs> 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 <laughs>